Namaste. Good morning. Today we have sharing by Jagdish Babu Belamji. Namaste, Jagdish ji. Namaste, Sunil bhai. Namaste, Sharmila Devi. Namaste to all the global explorers. Ji, namaste. So I will briefly introduce you. Then you can share your experience um, and your insights in the morning session as per the indicators uh, shown on the screen. So uh, yeah, as we all know, Jagdish Babu Belamji. He is an assistant professor in the institute, the Madhurapalli Institute of Technology and Science, MITS, Madhurapalli, Andhra Pradesh. He has been connected with the UHP activities from June 2021. And he is a very active volunteer from uh, Andhra Pradesh, the South Central region, active, very active in this uh, translation project. He has been conducting sessions also in uh, the students' workshops, online workshops, and uh, very active in his college uh, in the UHP cell as a coordinator and conducting uh, SIP programs to uh, his students. So with this brief introduction, I welcome Jagdish Bhaiya uh, to give his sharing in the morning session. Over to you, Jagdish Ji. Thank you, Sunil Bhaiya, for the brief introduction. So namaste. I place my understanding emerged out of my self-exploration with the feeling of gratitude to all. As Sunil Bhaiya mentioned, my name is Jayadish Babu and working as assistant professor in the Department of Physics at Madanpal Institute of Technology and Science, Madanpal, since 2015. I was born and brought up near Chittu. After completion of my graduation, I worked in a school for a year. I did my post-graduation from VAT Velu, and after that I served in a degree college for two years. I went to Mexico to complete my Doctor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Got married in 2009. And with family, I visited University of Lyons, France for postdoc fellowship. I have two children, 11 years boy, Vihan Kartik, who recently selected and joined in New Sainik School. And seven years girl, Laksha, studying second class. My father and mother are very supportive throughout my life. I have two siblings. We all meet very often during festivals. I got into UHP family from 2021 June during second lockdown. I was doing many other courses in online. I was in a state of depression because my major project sanctioned by DST got stopped due to COVID. So with that depression, I was searching for many uh, FDPs or many teachings by all. Uh, so I was somehow took this voluntarily. But within this one year, by 2022 June, I completed on the introductory UHV refresher part one, UHV two, and attended voluntary workshop at Bangalore. And I was being regularly in touch with content during weekly meetings, monthly meetings. I was involved in volunteering during FTPs and student development programs. Started listening to morning sessions from fifth batch onwards. And uh, exploring myself. My understanding through the morning sessions is very valuable to me. During batch seven, I was thinking that in UHV3, what will be there which is not learned in UHV2? But now, every day I was able to see depth in the content. Each slide is an eye-opener for me. Right now, I see this as information, trying to experientially validate it 
each proposal slowly. Coming to my sharing, I must out of these sessions, my understanding. During previous workshop and the sessions I took to the students, I have this information that human being is coexistence of self and body. But I'm trying to understand and realize this reality all the time. From the assignments given in the morning sessions, I explored this by observing the activities of self and body separate. One day I was taking lab session for the students. I observed that need of self is respect for me and also for student. And by my body needs physical facility like water, food. So I was observing, I was experiencing with more and more awareness of this reality that I am coexistence of self and body, I started understanding harmony in the self by observing the source of motivation for my imagination. I also understood harmony in the body by ensuring self-regulation in myself. Most of the time, I am referring to natural acceptance while taking food. I am asking myself, will this food nurtures my body? I also question myself, feeling of relation is naturally acceptable or feeling of opposition. So I, I am doing this regularly nowadays. Initially, I was trying to see the position, size and shape of the self. But now I am focused on desires, thoughts, and expectations and my activities in self. When I am able to see my participation in larger order, then I understand the activity of contemplation. I am trying to understand the harmony in nature. In introductory UHV, how these four orders are mutually fulfilling is very much informative and brought so much attention in me. In UHV2, the nature chart is so extensive that I was able to see the innateness, inheritance in detail. But now I realize that the content of understanding is only nine things. Four innateness of the four orders, four natural characteristics of the four orders and they coexist. So I slowly trying to develop this understanding and see the reality in the nature in the, all the four orders. So uh, for example, I slowly st stop taking non-veg food because of two reasons. One is it is not compatible to my digestive system. Many from many years I was suffering after eating that two, three days, some problem in my digestive system. And the other is that every unit in nature, animal and human art especially has this innateness of will to live. Now I can see inheritance of each order. Especially, I understood that why protecting the inheritance of these orders are very important. Either seeds or breed. Though, out of this point of time, I am not able to contribute to protection of this, but I will try not to violate it as much as possible. By the examples given by resource person during sessions helped me to understand why education sanskar is inheritance of human order, not breed based as in animal order. 
understanding coexistence and realization within is very limited at this point of time. However, I can see that I am there in the space with all, the, with all other units in space. Whenever I think of space, I bring this awareness that there is no activity. I used to think based on my preconditioning that prayers will make me to see the God. But now I started to see the God when wherever space is there. Maybe it is my assumption only right now. While offering prayers, food, donation to God, I think that these offerings will help other units in nature, which is coexistence in this existence. In UHV3, I came to know many details about human conduct. Right now, I have this information that how realizing the activities from top to bottom in model one will help me to work on my behavior, work and participation in larger order. That is my expression outside. It will take time to understand this part. But in model two, I understood that my conduct can be refined by working on understanding the values, policies, and character. So I am working on understanding each value discussed in the sessions. Now I have tried to understand 30 values, three policies, and character in detail. I started working on it one by one. Coming to exercise one and two, from batch five, I am attending morning sessions regularly and practicing exercise one and two regularly. So observing my imagination, so this is a very important step for me. During the first time, I was getting headache while trying to observe my imagination. Then I used to react to the thoughts and I tried to change them. And slowly I practiced it by observing. Now I'm able to see this imagination in me, especially my feelings. Previously I was observing my feeling after the event. Then slowly I was observing during the event now working to see it before I express my feeling outside. So steps one to four is happening in me very quickly. Whenever I am in disharmony, I observe my feeling. The feeling is not naturally acceptable at that moment. So through step four, I see that I get anger go to disharmony state because of my decision. I am responsible for my feeling. This clarity in me brought down all my complaints about others. Decisions taken by assumptions bring disharmony. And if I decide my feeling based on understanding, then I feel happy. In step six, I realized what to understand. I need to understand feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. However, ensuring this feeling of relationship itself is not continuous at this time. I shout at my students or my family members sometimes then I observed that I have feeling of mistrust, disrespect, and opposition. I am working on understanding trust, which is the foundation value. Whenever this feeling is not there in me, I'm clearly seeing that I have this feeling of disrespect and hatred to the others. Whenever I trust on intention of others, 
I am in harmony. But if I doubt their intention, then I am in disharmony. I can see up to step six clearly, but ensuring these feelings, I am working on this step seven, slowly and gradually. Coming to exercise two, I see that my body is there and I am there by observing sensation in me and the instructions that I am giving to my body. The transaction between myself and body is through only information. I am the responsible for all. I am the seer, I am the doer, and I am the enjoyer. So body is just an instrument. I'm not reading all the sensations that is reaching or there in my body. I read only those sensations that I pay attention. Previously, I had neck pain. Nowadays, I'm getting lower back pain. So when I pay attention on one, I'm not paying attention on other sensation. Based on my sanskar, I respond or react to sensations that I read. My sanskar based on assumptions will lead to disharmony. When my sanskar is based on understanding, then I will be in harmony. I see step one to six with clarity, but if I am not aware, and if I see myself as only body, then I don't work on these steps. Step seven is about observing myself in space. At this point of time, I'm not realized to see this reality as it is. Coming to understanding about myself through these sessions, these sessions has brought so much change in me, but I don't see this as transformation because I'm slipping back now and then. The frequency of going to old sanskar is reduced a lot. I used to react when my, my wife asks for any help in her office work. My intention is that she has to learn herself. The moment I say no, then I observe that I have feeling of opposition for her. I'm not comfortable within. Later I help her and try to observe my feeling. Nowadays I am observing before I react. I decide to not to react while driving my vehicle, but it happens again and again. I understand that the other is not doing mistake intentionally. He or she does it with lack of understanding. Then I feel so calm, but I am not able to make them understand that using phone while driving Honking unnecessarily in traffic is not safe. I realize that I need to work on my competence first before helping others to understand. So I decided to share this content to best of my capacity. Recently, I have shared this content to school teachers and able to see my value as a human being. I can work for achieving human goal through education sanskar dimension. I'm committed to share this content to my students, faculty and family as and when I can. I'm spending every day two to four hours for UHV on average. I'm involved in few projects of UHV such as video editing, student development program, 
registration, regional coordination, translation work of EHV book, etc. I am working more organized after UHV. Previously also I was working organizedly, but with a lot of disharmony and complaints about others. But now I see harmony is increasing, complaints are reducing. I still see that I am wasting so much time for unproductive work. I am always interested to be a part of UHV in one or the another way. I am motivating faculty and higher officials in my institute to take up UHV. In one of the meetings, I got opportunity to highlight how this UHV works as a holistic solution to all the issues that we are facing today. I will work on self-exploration more and more and I will be associating with UHV throughout my life. Thank you for all the mentors, resource persons, and all the co-explorers who helped me to realize this reality. And reach my excellence or in the path of reaching to my excellence. Thank you for the opportunity and patient listening. Thank you all. Namaste. Let me request uh, Shamla Didi to give her comments and uh, remarks regarding Yadish Babuji's sharing. Shamla Didi, over to you. Ji. Namaste, Jagdish Babuji. Namaste, Very Jagdish. nice sharing. I recall that uh, when you started with the fifth batch, um, your first sharing was very impressive because you were able to look at things point-wise and you were able to um, sort of explore and uh, try to see things for yourself. So uh, in the first uh, batch, I think a lot of exploration was happening. Um, after the sixth batch, I felt a little complacency had come perhaps, or we tend to become a little confident about our understanding and so somehow, sometimes, perhaps, there is little slowing down of the process in us. So that is what uh, I had, I could make out um, after your, after the sixth batch sharing. But I'm happy to see that um, what I can tell from, you know, observing and uh, your questions and your sharings is that the exploration is um, again back on and perhaps at a deeper level than before, uh, which is nice to know. Also, a um, couple of things that um, were raised as questions by others, which you already have responded to some extent. I just wanted to add a few things that um, when we, you know, when, when we say we want to make the other understand, if we can look within ourselves, we will see this um, we will see this um, sort of need within us to make the other understand. And this is uh, a reflection of our sanskar, a strong sanskar, to either 
impose or dominate or make that impression on the other rather than do that if our focus is totally on ourselves then we will not have that irritation or that urge to want to tell the other we'll be able to accept that the other is you know on their own journey of understanding and may take some time so we will leave as a proposal and then not be disturbed by their response or reaction to whatever the proposal is given and they may not accept the proposal they may not reflect on it also they may outright reject it also but for all of those if we can uh, see that we are not getting disturbed then we are on the right track the moment their reaction is leading to even the slightest of disturbance within us now this becomes our problem this is not because of them this is my own lack of understanding because at that moment i am certainly not referring to my natural acceptance my natural acceptance does not change because of somebody else's behavior my natural acceptance stays the same as does theirs they may not be referring to it but more concern for me is i am also slipping i am not referring to it and that is leading to unhappiness in me so that part uh, uh, that question came up about how to make others understand i think the focus should be like you rightly mentioned the focus should be on ourselves because as long as it doesn't reflect in our behavior nobody is going to be interested in listening there are so many people preaching so many things for a person to be able to see what is right for them until and unless they are able to see a living example it may not seem very real to them so if it reflects in our behavior consistently in a definite manner then the other gets reassured the other is assured in my behavior they have trust in me like you said and only then will they start listening the point is that when they are ready to listen they will come to me rather than my feeling the need to make them understand so if we can see that difference when there is total acceptance in us then we are able to see that they are the ones who are lacking understanding that doesn't mean i have to react i can continue on my journey of referring to the natural acceptance and moving on there was a chinese philosopher um shuang tse around the 4th century or so who um has said a few things and in the translation it comes out as we need to flow like a river reflect like a mirror and respond like an echo and what i could gather from this what i could understand from this i'll just share that with you and you can see if it works for you flowing like a river in the sense when things are moving you know how the river flows if you are moving along with the flow of the river there is less effort things are happening you are moving but you require less effort if you are trying to move against the flow now it requires lot of effort 
which seems like a huge struggle and you may not get very far either so similarly acceptance for the condition the way it is and sharing when there is some extent of readiness perhaps leaving the proposal but not trying to enforce it or try to convince the other rather move on and wait till they are ready and they come to you similarly when we say reflect like a mirror so seeing the reality the way it is and letting it pass through you whatever you see letting it pass through you without holding on to it like how a mirror when you put light on it it reflects exactly you know what you see the same thing it doesn't hold on to something what we tend to do is we attach some meaning to whatever we are seeing and based on the meaning that we give we hold on to that grudge or that grievance and we are not able to let go so like you were mentioning about the um the discomfort or the conflict in you with a certain person first of all i would really commend you to be honest enough and share that and to be able to notice this that this is something that you need to work on so for things like that if we can see that no matter who made the mistake no matter whose mistake it was there is a lack of understanding on both sides perhaps for the other because of the mistake they made and also on our side because we are not able to let go of this feeling of opposition so if we can see that the other's intention is just as pure as mine he lacks understanding therefore the mistake happened not that he deliberately wanted to not that his intention was bad so when i see that i let go of this feeling of opposition now i reflect like a mirror and similarly when we say respond like an echo so if the other is shouting i see things as they are that the other is the one who is in pain not that he is shouting at me which is a meaning that i give so instead of giving a different meaning if i can see the reality for what it is i will notice that the other is shouting because they themselves are in distress they themselves are in conflict they themselves are unhappy and need help so when i see that then i respond like an echo i see things the way they are and with that right meaning i respond in the right way so i i try to help them i have concern for them so this is what i was just thinking when you were sharing so i thought i will share it with all of you and you can see if it makes sense to you ji the thing yeah <laughs> thank thanks a lot for this um suggestions and comments um i have this understanding but i am trying to develop right understanding so you are helping me to see the reality as it is and yeah. uh, as you rightly noticed yes uh, fifth batch i was very attentive i was doing everything every work assignment or uh, i am exploring deeply Uh, sincerely committedly and uh, it came in my uh, expression in the sharing uh, but uh, in the sixth batch uh, yes uh, i stopped uh, noti- noting in my uh, book journal uh, i was thinking that okay this is only repetition then i fall back i was not uh, observing uh, many things 
so um, in the sharing uh, after sixth batch also uh, i remember that uh, you told uh, you have this as information only it's not uh, shown in the expression <laughs> or the behavior <laughs> you are able to recall it uh, uh, rightly but uh, seventh batch again i i pay attention i notice i do this uh, homework uh, uh, regularly and um, then uh, I was able to do at least some part of uh, this. And uh, yeah, uh, when I say make them understand, I always slip this word, make them understand, instead of help them understand. Mm -hmm. It is because of my old sanskars from childhood. I want to make others uh, understand. Uh, I want all the others should be like me. So uh, this uh, sanskar is uh, dominating now also. So I want to make the others understand. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, I want to help them understand. I have to come out of this sanskar. Even students, uh, uh, when they don't listen this UHC classes attentively, I get into reacting mode. Um, why they are not paying attention? This is very much useful for them. But they are not seeing their importance. So um, I am getting reaction. So this word, I have to come out of this. Uh, to make them understand, I had to help them understand. Yes, Didi. and uh, yes, um, uh, as you said, they will come uh, to me when they need this. Yes, I observed two, three instances where students came to me that I have this issue, sir, I want to discuss with you. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is happening in my family uh, with the UHV. Can you suggest something like that? Um, uh, some students came uh, and the faculty also, uh, one or two faculty talked to me uh, regarding this. Uh, and in my family members also, I tried to uh, propose this to my uh, son and also my brother's uh, children. Uh, so they are in very young age, but still I am placing the proposal uh, with their level of understanding. Yeah, and this example uh, that you gave is very much helpful for me. I will work on this. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Gee. I also wanted to mention that um, the fact that you are participating, you are volunteering in a large way, that is uh, extremely useful for your own growth as well as for the work in the society. So... I really applaud that and I think it's, um, I suppose we have a lot of expectations from people like you because even though you started only recently, but the growth that you are having or you are able to make in yourself is a reflection of the kind of exploration you are doing. So continue with that and all the very best of wishes. The very fact that at least we are not leaving, like some, some of the participants, they go through one round of the exercise one and two, and then like you said, you know, many people feel, okay, it's the repetition and I already know. But the point is, we have it as information. We don't know till we actually see it for ourselves, like you mentioned. So that, that is a long process that is something that we all are trying to work on. And uh, so if we keep at it and we continue the journey, we continue the deeper exploration, we will be able to reach that goal at a faster pace. So all the very best to you. Best wishes.